into the meeting chat and you should be able to see that that will take you to a website called Mentimeter and it will ask you a question and that question is what things can you do in your home to improve energy efficiency and reduce your carbon footprint so you can take part and add words and ideas to that word cloud by the link in the chat um, you can also get to it by going to the website menti.com so that's m-e-n-t-i dot com and entering the code 1466 5905 and I'll put that into the chat as well so yeah please do click on the link in the chat to take part I'll also be bringing it up on the screen now so don't worry if you can't take part in the link or adding to it directly um, I will share my screen in a second and hopefully you'll be able to see the answers on the screen so you can watch live as they come up um, so let's get go can, yeah okay Bear with me while I bring it up on screen. We've got lots of answers coming in, which is great. And let's see what sort of thing we've got coming in. So, yeah, the question is, what things can you do in your home to improve energy efficiency and reduce your carbon footprint? So we've had a popular answer of insulate. Yeah, so obviously the more times that the word get enters, gets entered, it will appear bigger on our screens there. Um, that's a great one. And we'll be talking about measures like insulation and double glazed windows as things that you could get done through the Green Homes Grant Scheme today. Um, turn down your heat. And yeah, that's a great one. Not always easy when it's um, cold, especially in our climate. But if you can, by a few degrees, that does make a difference. Um, turn off your lights, yep, yeah, that's also a good one. And anything that's on standby that you don't need to have turned on and only using the energy that you need is, is a good one. What else have we got on there? We've got solar panels, yep, yeah, again, that's something that we can look at through the Green Homes Grant Scheme. Um, so we'll touch on that later today. Um, draft proofing doors and windows, yep, yeah, a really good one that you can do quickly but also through other insulation me measures as well. So yeah, a mixture of quick wins that you can do yourself and uh, other wider measures that you can have done to your home. So that's a good mix there. OK, brilliant. And we'll touch on more of these energy uh, saving measures that you can take um, throughout this session. So we'll obviously focus on the Green Homes Grant Scheme and then share any other tips um, for making your home more efficient as well. So that's great. OK. Brilliant. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your contributions there. Um, and we'll share that word cloud with you in the email afterwards as well. So now I will hand over to my colleague, uh, Andrew, and he will go through his presentation on the Green Homes Grant. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen and go through this presentation. So my name's Andrew Hager, and I'm Policy Review Manager at Wandsworth Council and I lead on our climate change work and I'm going to talk to you today about Green Homes Grant. So I uh, just want to check, Amy, can everyone see that? Is that coming up on screen? Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. And just a reminder for everyone, whilst Andrew's running through his presentation, if you do have any questions throughout, just pop them in the meeting chat and we'll pick up on them at the end. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. So what is Green Homes Grant? Um, so this is funding that we've secured at Wandsworth Council um, from central government. Um, and the Green Homes Grant is funding to support the retrofit of homes. So we've secured funding to deliver energy efficiency and low carbon heating for over 120 homes across the borough. And um, I'll go through, a, I'll do a very quick overview now and then we'll delve into some of the details a bit more. But basically this, uh, this scheme is open for people who um, are on low income and have less energy efficient homes. So it's targeted to people who have an income of under £30,000 uh, per year in, in the household or under £20,000 once you take away the um, housing costs. And it's for um, people who've got an energy performance certificate or EPC rating of D, E, F and G. And those are the lowest EPC ratings um, for, for homes. So it's open for those people. And um, if you're eligible, then you can access um, around about £10,000 worth of funding for your your property to install energy efficiency and uh, low carbon um, solutions and improvements to your home to um, lower your energy bills and reduce your carbon footprint and I'll go into more detail about what exactly that means now. 
So why should you be interested? Well, you can get around about £10,000 worth of improvements for your home if you meet the criteria and you don't have to pay anything if you're an owner occupier. Um, so the £10,000 is a rough guideline. It might be that the improvements would be less than £10,000 or maybe slightly over £10,000 worth of improvements. Um, uh, it, it's a sort of like a, an average that we've got and it depends on the home uh, and the property and what the needs are in terms of improving the energy efficiency. Um, so the improvements that you can have made to your home will make your home warmer and they can reduce your energy bills as well. And um, we can also do stuff around low carbon heating solutions um, as like heat pumps and solar thermal. And using less energy can help reduce your carbon emissions as well as reducing your energy bills as well. And with energy price increases, energy efficiency is really important, especially if you don't have a, a, a large income and, and you're feeling the pinch of it about struggling to, to pay your bills uh, and it, it's becoming a bit of a challenge. So who's eligible? We'll go into this a, a little bit more, um, but the, it's important to stress that the, the Greenhouse Grant Scheme is not open to all, it's targeted at those who have the most need for affordable warmth. So it's targeted at those who may be struggling to pay their energy bills due to having incomes or because your um, home is less energy efficient. So you need to be either an owner occupier or private landlord. Uh, um, or in a private rented uh, accommodation. The household income has to be under £30,000 a year or under £20,000 once you take away housing costs, that could be rent or mortgage, things like that. The property must have an EPC rating of D, E, F or G. Um, and if you don't know your EPC rating, don't worry. Um, there's, uh, Amy will put a link in the chat of the website where you can go and enter your property details and you can find your EPC. So if you've moved relatively recently, say in the last 10 years or so, if you're in rented accommodation or, or you own your, own your home, um, in the last 10 years, you'll probably have an EPC um, attached to your property because that was a requirement from, from then on. Um, if you've been in your home for, for longer than that, then it might be that you don't have an EPC rating because you've never had to do one. Um, but don't worry, um, to apply, you don't need to have an EPC rating there. Um, that can be done. And if you if you really do want to know what it is, then then, then what you can do is contact us um, because we have access to modelled EPCs. So it's kind of taking information, basically, information about your house and applying it there. So it's like you're on this street and um, X number of other properties on your street have an EPC of say E, um, then there's a good chance that yours will be an E as well. So it, it looks at that sort of stuff there. And also crucially, you need to have be willing to have the work done to your property. So only sign up if you are willing to have the work done, um, sort of to have sort of insulation or solar panels or heat pump or building controls, things like that. I'll go through some of the measures now, but it, you need to be willing to have have work done to your property. So what can you have installed? Um, so one crucial thing that I need to stress is that you can't have your gas boiler replaced by a new gas boiler using the scheme. So this scheme is aimed at lowering carbon emissions and gas boilers um, are fueled by gas, which is a fossil fuel and it creates carbon emissions. So one of the things with, with this scheme is that you can't have your gas boiler replaced by a new gas boiler in this. But there's lots and lots of other things you can have done that will improve the energy efficiency of your home and lower your fuel bills. So insulation, you can have external wall insulation, internal wall, cavity wall insulation, um, if you've got cavities in your wall, they can be filled. Uh, roof insulation or underfloor or a combination of all of the above. And insulation is a fantastic way of improving the energy efficiency of your home and making it feel much, much warmer. There's also air source heat pumps. So uh, these use electricity to transfer heat from one place to another and to heat water. So it's kind of like a fridge in reverse where it takes um, heat from the um, from the outside, from the ambient atmosphere and um, concentrates it and heats water um, and that can um, heat your home. There's also double glazed windows, so these can reduce heat loss and cut drafts. Uh, there's solar and PV, which is um, photovoltaic um, panels. Uh, so this produces electricity for your home in a low carbon way. There's also stuff like heating controls, so you can better control the temperature of your home and use less energy. So for example, if you live in a house and you have upstairs and downstairs, then you can control it so your upstairs is one temperature, your downstairs is another temperature and balance out according to the needs during the day. Um, so you're not heating the whole house to the same temperature. Uh, and then solar thermal as well, and this provides hot water that's heated by the sun in a similar way to sort of solar PV. It takes solar energy and heats water to then heat your home as well. So how can you apply for funding? So 
the way to do this is to register on the Groundwork London website. Uh, uh, the address there so it's groundwork.secure.force.com forward slash GHG inquiry. Uh, Groundforce are uh, a charity that we're working with who are handling the um, the application process for the Greenhomes grant funding. So after you fill in that, um, that registration form, uh, you'll receive a call from them to confirm eligibility. Um, and you can just run through that and run through some more details um, just to check that you are eligible for the scheme. Um, and then you can also call the GHG LAD helpline. So it's Green Homes Grant Local Authority Delivery Helpline um, on the number there 0800 233 5655 to speak to the team. And that's open Monday to Friday 9 till 5. Uh, and all of this information is on the Wandsworth Council website. So if you go to wandsworth.gov.uk forward slash GHG, you can find all the information you need. Um, and if you go onto the website, if you can't remember this, GHG and the exact address, go onto the ones with the Council website, type in either GHG or Green Homes Grant, and you'll be able to find the information there. And then you can find links to all this information there. And also there's a uh, frequently asked questions um, page on there as well to, to, to take you through that. So basically, if you're if you think you might be eligible, then please do register. And in terms of extra information that you need to apply, so you only really need some very basic information to register on the, the Ground Force website. You need your name, address, your property tenure, so whether you're in private rented, own occupied accommodation, things like that. And then when the screening team call, they may ask you about your energy performance certificate for your property or EPC. And that's because, like I said before, the, uh, it's only EPC, D, E, F or G are eligible, but you can find that, that in the link that um, Amy's um, put in the chat so you can find out what your EPC rating is. And they also may ask you about your income as the household income must be under £30,000 a year or under £20,000 after housing costs. They may ask for information about your income. Uh, there may be some, some information that you might need to send to them. Um, it depends because um, if, you're, um, if you're accessing certain benefits, then it means you will be eligible. So you just need to kind of double check that and then you don't need to send anything else in. If you're not accessing those sorts of benefits, then uh, uh, you might need to supply some information around there just to show that, that your income is is below the £30,000. But we've tried to keep it as simple as possible and, and, and try to minimise the amount of information you have to provide to the minimum to satisfy sort of the requirements, really. We, we don't want it to be too onerous for you. And then just in terms of who's doing the work. So um, Wandsworth has um, partnered with 12 other local authorities in West London to secure Greenhouse grant funding. Um, and an organisation called Warmworks is delivering the programme. And Groundwork London, that I mentioned before, are handling the applications and eligibility. So Warmworks are the company that's going to arrange with you for the works to be carried out. And ju just a note about Warmworks. So they're going to be using reputable contractors that are part of a government approved scheme called trust mark and so this is a government scheme which gives you confidence that um, the contractors who are coming in to, to deliver the things to your home um, have fulfilled certain criteria around customer service around training for their staff around sustainability as well so that makes sure that that gives us the confidence that the people who come into your home are reputable, are trustworthy, and will be doing a job to a certain standard as well. And Warmworks themselves are, are experts around retrofits. They originally started in Scotland. They were working with the Scottish government to deliver retrofits and energy efficiency improvements to, to homes in Scotland. Um, and since then, they, they, they had lots of success there, built a really good reputation, and they've ex expanded um, across, the, uh, across the country then. And they, they, they do lots of work around retrofit. They, they're doing lots of work in uh, London and the Southeast. And so they've got a local base here and they, they're looking at um, bringing other contractors in as well. So um, there was a, when they were doing, setting up all, all the works around this, they had um, a list of 60 contractors who, who expressed an interest in uh, working with them to deliver to deliver works for the Greenhomes Grant across um, different parts of London and the Southeast. And they've narrowed up down to 11 who fulfilled their much stricter criteria around delivery and reliability and training and things like that. Um, so they, they've narrowed it down, they're, they're picking from a select field to make sure that they've got the best and they're working with uh, a few other contractors to bring them up to the standards that they set. So they've got rigorous standards here around what they what they want to deliver and, and they hold themselves to high standards around that delivery. So I just wanted to sort of reassure you around that um, that there's there's lots of process around that to, to check that the people who will be coming to deliver work to you know what they're doing and they're doing good good standard of work.
So what happens next once you um, fill in the the eligibility criteria for the sort of registered the interest with this? So Groundwork London will check that you're eligible. So they'll do that screening call with you and they'll run through the paperwork and process to make sure that you are eligible and you can go in. And then uh, Warmworks will get in touch about arranging for a retrofit coordinator to visit and assess your property. So what they'll do is they look around your home to check sort of like um, for double glazing, insulation, what your boiler is, all that kind of stuff, just to make sure they've got all the information they need. Then they'll develop what's called a whole house plan, which produce, is produced with recommendations on how you can improve the energy efficiency of your property. Um, so it, it goes through different steps that you can take to improve the energy efficiency. And then Warmworks will discuss that with you around the different options that are available to improve your property. So it could be that a combination of these measures would work or other measures would work and they'll discuss that with you around what suits you and what gives you the best sort of um, energy efficiency but also what suits what you want for your property um, and then Warmworks will coordinate with you for the works to take place so they'll talk to their contractors around their availability and your availability and they'll we'll call that out for you so you don't have to do that and after the work has happened there'll be another assessment to check the new EPC rating and the hope is that you will have gone up at least one rating but hopefully multiple ratings so you've gone maybe from an E to um, to a C rating uh, and, and that would be ideal because it, it means that your home is much more energy efficient, your home will be warmer and your fuel bills will be reduced as well. And the crucial thing here is you'll you'll have final say over what work happens in your property and also when. So you'll be in control about it. You'll be talking to people about what can happen, but you'll have the final say over what happens. So for those who rent, um, that's not a problem. Uh, the Green Homes Grant Scheme is open to those who privately rent their home. Um, landlords are not eligible for the full £10,000, but can access up to £5,000 for improvements. And there would need to be a landlord contribution, um, which we'll go into. And there's more information on the Wandsworth website about how much you would need to pay. Um, You'll still be able to, to take advantage of that easier route to access improvements via Warmworks. Um, so you don't need to, to sort out all, all the work yourself as you would do for lots of other stuff if you're doing it um, independently. Um, Warmworks can arrange all this and also they'll be using reputable contractors for you. So um, if, you're, uh, if you're a renter, then register, but please do let your landlord know because you need to be eligible in terms of the um, eligibility criteria around income, but the landlord needs to be willing to, to contribute to, to the works that are taking place. And if you're a landlord, then please do register. But again, let your tenant know because they have to be eligible under the criteria as well. So there still needs to be that check on the household income and the EPC rating. So landlords eligible for up to £5,000 worth of funding but must pay at least a third of the costs of improvement. So it's still a very good deal, even though a landlord would have to, to pay, make a contribution to this, it's still a really good deal for landlords because it, it helps with improving energy efficiency for, for their properties. And if you're a social renter, then you will need to check with your housing provider before you register because some housing providers will be taking part in the Green Homes Grant Scheme, but others aren't. Um, so it, it does depend on who your who you're social renting from um, and what their plans are around their own retrofit of their housing stock because um, different um, housing associations will have different approaches to retrofit. They may have uh, a long term plan that they're developing around retrofit of, of all their properties or it might be that they're, they're trying to do some of this work now using Greenhomes Grant funding. So if you've listened to that and you think that sounds great, but I'm probably not eligible, don't worry there are ways that you could be more energy efficient. So even if you're not eligible, you can still improve the energy efficiency of your home. So if you can afford to, you can look at retrofitting your home or installing some of the me measures we've mentioned like insulation or solar PV. So if you have an, an, enough money saved up to be able to do that, then please do go ahead. That, that's a really good way of improving the energy efficiency of your home and also lowering your carbon footprint. And the crucial thing here is this is, um, we're promoting this as part of our climate change work and it's about reducing carbon emissions as well as helping you reduce your fuel bills as well. And there's other sort of cheaper measures as well that you can introduce into your home, like LED lighting, smart heating controls, um, and thermostatic radiator valves. So it can give you uh, LEDs will massively reduce your um, 
uh, energy use for your, for your lighting if you've got sort of traditional incandescent bulbs um, then then switching to LEDs will really you'll, you'll see a noticeable difference in, in your your um, electricity bills there and smart heating controls that there's brands out there like Nest and Hive and things like that and there's lots of other ones out there um, and they can give you that control of your home so you can vary the, the heat levels and have better control and, and use energy much more efficiently. And thermostatic radiator valves are just valves on your radiator. We can turn them up and down depending on how hot you want your room to be. Um, and there's other things like thermal curtains, smart energy meters are being installed by um, energy companies for free. And that gives you really good um, control and, and, and information around how much energy you're using. So you can see actually this is when the spikes of my energy use are. This is when I'm, I'm paying more for for, for my for my um for my energy and can then help you sort of shift behaviors and, and think about actually uh, if I turn this off or use it at a different time then actually that that's a better way of doing it and there's stuff like draft excluders and radiator reflectors and they're generally quite affordable they, they, they're not a huge outlay for, for people to, to improve your energy efficiency and also some, some of the things to mention is there's um, Southwest London Energy Advice Partnership um, they were, they ha have a website there that provides lots of energy information. They provide impartial energy advice and they actually have um, a, a session on, I think it's the 19th of March um, in Tooting, um, where they're going to be sort of like physically present, where you can pop along and have um, uh, have a chat with them about energy efficiency and what you can do. And especially if you're struggling to pay your bills or you want to do more around energy efficiency, they can provide that free impartial energy advice. And there's also Wandsworth RAP, which is run by um, one of our partner organisations, Thinking Works, who provide, um, provide information and support around energy efficiency improvements to your home. So next steps, uh, register with Groundwork if you think you're eligible, uh, speak to the screening team to progress your application. And if you can't take part in the scheme, please tell people who you think might be able to. Um, so it, it might be that your neighbour or somebody you know elsewhere um, is, it might well be eligible for this. So please do tell them about it, even if you can't, or even if you are eligible for it, tell somebody else about it. Because um, we're trying to get as many people onto the scheme as possible. We've got funding um, up until March um, 2023, um, but we've got that in two phases. So um, our first phase that we're running now, um, that kind of the, the entry bit closes at the end of March. So we're trying to get as many people in as possible to take advantage of that funding. And then we've got further funding for another year. So if you want to take part, um, please do so. If, if you're not quite sure, you want to have a bit more of a think about it uh, and you don't want to apply straight away, that's absolutely fine. There's still funding available for the next year, but I would encourage you to, to sign up if you are interested because it means it'll just get done that much quicker. So there's the um, phone number on the screen and there's also um, our website where you can find all the links you need to be able to access um, the information you need to, to register uh, for Green Homes Grant. So I think that is it from me. Um, thank you very much. And we'll go over to any questions that people have. OK, perfect. Thanks very much, Andrew, for that presentation. Really informative and I hope that people found that useful. Um, so just a reminder, I can see that we've had some questions in the chat already, which is brilliant. But if you want to add any questions that you want to put to Andrew about the scheme, please do add them into the chat. You can also use the raise your hand function and we will select you to ask your question. Um, the button to do that should be next to the meeting chat button on Teams on your screen. So it's a, it's a reactions button. There's a little smiley face in the hand. You can hover over that and then click the raise hand. Um, also, if, if you're struggling to find access to that and um, want to shout out a question, then um, yeah, we can we can do that as well. Um, OK, so brilliant. I can, I'll go to Susie first and then we'll go through some of the ones that are in the chat. So Susie, over to you. Oh, hello. Um, I, I have a feeling I probably won't be able to be um, do this because I'm in a grade two listed house. Um, and I've already I've got I think I've got pretty good insulation in the roof. I can't have so solar panels because of the re rule, rules. Um, I can't have double glazing, but I put my own secondary glazing in. Uh, what was the other one? Um, I've done draft thing. The only thing I can think that I might be able to have would be the ground source heat pump thing, but I'm not too sure I'm even allowed that outside my house. So I don't know whether it's... Yeah, 
Have you had anyone else with a grade two? Uh, not grade two. We've had people in conservation areas um, yeah. a apply for funding and we've had to get planning permission to put to, to do things externally. Mm. Um, if it's internal on in conservation areas, you don't need planning permission. Yeah. If it's facing away from the street, you don't need planning permission for that. Um, grade two is different and I'm not as familiar you with know, the restrictions. I'm around that. <laughs> um, I, I would say apply. And then we can come in and, and, and see what's available and then yeah. can see whether plan, for, well, plan permission will probably be needed for anything that's external, but that could be applied for and, and see see what's possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say sign up anyway and, and find yeah. out what your options are. It might be that there's some internal things that can be done where you wouldn't need planning permission for it. So mm. that, that might so be. So would like possible. radiator thingies, like, you know, the valves to make it yeah, I mean that that should be fine. Um, that would be included. Normally, would yeah, uh, grey. It, it sort of depends on on sort of what the overall package. So if it's just sort of a handful of very minor things, yeah, then it, it probably wouldn't get covered. There needs okay. to be some sort of um, there's there's basically the the, the government attached to the funding. The government said sort of a certain amount of things need to be done of sort of more major interventions Maybe, yeah. um so it, they, they would need to be something to do with insulation for example yeah, okay um to to then have some of the other things put in well, I um, so can't have cavity walls and all that sort of thing it's in the house is absolutely freezing to tell you the truth yeah um so i i think register and then the, yeah. the retrofit coordinator who comes out you can maybe have have a chat to that person and okay. explains the context and i'm sure they'll be able to see from coming in and, and having a look around sort of the, the context of your own property. So, um, yeah, it, it, with a lot of these things, like house by house, it varies very, yeah. very differently yeah. because most houses are, are different from the next house. Yeah. Even if you're on the same street, there's different things that we've done to the house. There's sort of different levels of insulation and extensions have happened and yeah. you know, insulation of the roof and in one and not another one and all that kind of stuff. So it really does vary and it's always sort of a, a house by house, property by property basis, really. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Susie. And yeah, like Andrew said, it's definitely worth just applying. I mean, it's obligation free to send in that application and then they, they'll come and assess it so it's definitely worth doing if you can okay thank you okay perfect and then so we've had a question from Yasmin in the chat so Yasmin says I have filled up a registration form online for the grant and I received a phone call to say I'm being accepted is this a scam so just touching on that Andrew and maybe a little bit about um, the process of how pe they'll, people will be contacted and the legitimacy of our um, providers yeah so this is funding that's come from central government, from the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. And, and so this is official government funding that um, we've bid for and that we've received um, and that we are now sort of like helping to deliver improvements to, pe to people's homes. So there's, if you're an owner occupier, you will not have to pay anything at all for this. It's, it's money that's there to help improve energy efficiency um, and lower carbon emissions. And it's part of sort of the national approach to trying to kickstart the retrofit market so that then um, everyone can try to retrofit their homes and reduce carbon emissions uh, as part of um, trying to reach the targets that have been set around um, reducing carbon emissions and, and combating climate change and, and reaching targets that, that the UK has set around um, net zero for 2050. So in terms of sort of who we're working with, the, the main ones we're working with um, that will be contacting with you is, is Groundwork, uh, yeah, Groundwork, um, Groundwork London. So if you get a call from Groundwork, or it might be they might be calling themselves green doctors because that's like the um the the energy efficiency bit within groundwork um so so if you're getting a call from them and you filled in a registration form then it is real um so the, I, I would say just double check sort of like who they are um where they're coming from um uh, and sort of how they've got information so if you're not really sure then just ask them some questions around that so like how did you get the information um that, that you're asking me about um when did it maybe it's worth remembering when you filled it in and when you submitted it so then they should be able to tell you that and that can then give you a bit more confidence that it, it's not a scam but it, if you fill in the registration form you get a call from groundwork or for or call themselves green doctors um then 
they're following up on the registration form that you submitted. Uh, Yasmin, I hope that helps and gives you a bit more confidence uh, uh, about this. Thanks, Andrew. Um, great. So the next question that we have in the chat is from Colin, who says, please, can you define housing costs for the definition of the 20K eligibility criteria? I think that's the 30K eligibility criteria. But yeah, just touching on housing costs and how that is calculated. Uh, yeah, so housing costs would primarily be rent or mortgage payments, but also um, stuff like um, buildings insurance would also potentially um, be included there. Um, I can't remember if energy bills are included in that or not. Uh, I, I'll need to double check what what exactly the criteria are around the housing costs and, and what was agreed around that. But yeah, the main thing is is mortgage and, and rent are the things you kind of need to, to subtract from it. Thank you. I hope that's helpful, Colin. If you have any other questions around that piece around the eligibility, just shout or put that back in the chat. Thanks, Andrew. Um, OK, next one is from Yasmin again around um, housing association tenants. So can housing association tenants with poor house heat efficiency still apply? Uh, yes, but you do need to check with your um, housing association as to whether they're taking part in this or not and whether they'd be doing willing to do the work because um, they will need to pay some of it as, as the landlord. They're going to need to pay a third of the costs, um, so they need to, to be willing to do that. So um, I would say before you apply, it, it's worth checking with checking with your um, housing association first if they're taking part or willing to take part. Um, there has been some outreach done by um, the kind of consortium we're a part of. So the, we've got the 12 local authorities and it is, it's being sort of headed up by Ealing, um, Ealing Council in West London, and they've contacted lots of different housing associations because obviously housing associations kind of don't often don't work in just one borough, they work across multiple boroughs within London. So they've, they've led on sort of contacting them and saying, do you want to take part? Do you have any properties that they've already identified as they want to make energy efficiency improvements to and they can access some of this funding to help do that? Um, so yeah, it's worth contacting them and just saying you're interested in this, you think you're probably eligible and would they be willing to take part in it? Um, and they'll, they'll be able to access up to £5,000 worth of funding, which can really help um, sort of where they've been sort of thinking actually we want to do something to a property, don't quite have the funding in place to do it, this can help with actually pushing that over into being able to deliver it. Great, thanks Andrew. Um, okay, so the next question is around um, Wandsworth Council as a freeholder, so sort of tied to that last question. So is Wandsworth Council as a freeholder able to take part in this scheme? Otherwise that might exclude a lot of leaseholders in the borough. Uh, yeah, so um, once the council with, council with our social housing, we've identified 15 properties as part of Green Homes Grant that we're taking forward, and that's with um, social tenants. Um, so we're, we're going to do 15 properties um, to, to retrofit them and, and improve the energy efficiency of them. Um, in terms of leaseholders, um, that's a tricky one because it very much depends on your property and what your leasehold covers that you're able to do to it. So, for example, in large blocks of flats, you're probably a bit more limited in terms of what you can do. Um, it, it's, yeah, it, it's tricky and it very much depends on the situation. So I would say um, ask and say, so I'm, I'm thinking about doing that um, and um, check what you can have done. It might be worth, if you're eligible, signing up, having um, a whole house plan, done that will give you some different options and then exploring around with with the the sort of freeholder around what you can actually do um so it might be worth having a look at your agreements your leaseholder agreements to to find out actually what other things you can do because if there's lots of limitations around what you can do so you can't really do anything external things like that then actually um that's going to be quite tricky for example if you're in a large block you probably won't be able to change your windows and things like that but um the other thing to say is that once with council is developing um, a strategy, a, a long term approach to retrofit of our social housing stock. Um, obviously, th there's an awful lot of properties. I think once with council has 30,000 properties in the borough, um, so it, it's a really big task. So what we're doing is looking at all of our stock, prioritising those areas that have the, the that aren't as energy efficient 
energy efficient as others and, and thinking about how we can approach retrofitting our housing stock to bring up to, to the levels needed to improve energy efficiency and then also um, install low carbon um, heating solutions as well and looking at things like solar panels on roofs and all that kind of thing so th there's the, that long-term approach that is being developed at the moment great thanks Andrew um, good question here about deadlines so is there a deadline to apply or is it first come first served um, so we have so we have funding for this first phase, which closes. Uh, basically, the applications need to be in by the end of March to access that. Um, and um, we will probably have enough funding within that pot um, to be able to, to, well, definitely to be able to fund everybody on this call. That's not a problem at all. Um, so I say get get your application in there. After that, we've got funding up until um, this time next year. But as soon as that funding runs out, that's it, because we've got a set amount for um for one's worth um and once that's gone that's gone um so i would say the sooner you apply the quicker you can get the, the work done and also so that you know that you'll be able to access that funding so i i say get it sooner sooner the better but you don't have to sort of rush for it because there is funding that's available for up to a year's time but i, I would say try and try and get it in sooner apply now if you can yeah. yeah okay perfect um and then we've had a few questions in the chat around solar panels and uh the scheme um solar together and a few people struggling with that process but we did have a few questions in that came through at the registration stage around solar together and how that compares and works with this scheme and then there have been a few um, comments in the chat from susie and frank about their journey with with solar panels and solar together. So just touching on that first, Andrew, and then I might ask Frank or Susie if they wanted to come in and ask that question directly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, on solar together, so that's a separate scheme from Greenhomes Grant that we're we're running. So that that's being run by um, Greater London Authority, um, and it, working in conjunction with with London boroughs to to promote this. Uh, it's a group buying scheme for solar panels where basically people register. And then um, you can access sort of discounts on on solar panel installation because you've got a set volume of solar panels, which means that you can get sort of a better deal on the installation if you, if you do it in, as a group. And I think there's something like 2000 people across London signed up for it last time round, so that that managed to get a, a discount on on solar panels. Um, so um, I, I read a, a couple of the comments around that and, and so I. I think the best thing to do would be to contact me directly about um, your experience around so around solar together. So I've got an email around that, and I can send that through to solar together to to highlight to them around some of the issues you're experiencing around um, customer delivery. Um, I do know that there has been some disruption um, in terms of delivery around um, materials and suppliers and things like that. Um, and also there's been disruption due to COVID as well over the summer and then before Christmas with um, sort of like people needing to isolate and, and installers needing to isolate. And I know that's that's has caused some disruption to it. But if you could email me, uh, Amy, if you can yeah. pop my email in the chat or I'll yeah. put it in there. It's OK, I'll do that now. I'll okay. put your email. Yeah. Um, and if you just email me directly and then I can I can pass that on. Um, and, and yeah, so hopefully we can get that sorted out with you. Um, I did actually speak to the GLA around sort of together this morning, actually, um, just to check in with them on how progress is going. So um, they're aware that there's been sort of it, the delivery hasn't been as fast as they would have liked it to be. OK, thanks, Andrew. And I've just popped Andrew's email address into the chat here. So if anyone has any direct questions about solar together, please do message him. Um, we can I'll also circulate um, our, an email after this so um, you can get it that way as well. Okay, okay, thank you. I, I saw the reply from Susie around um, no shows, and and yeah, um, email me, and then I'll I can speak to you around that, and and we can raise that because that's that's not not good enough in in terms of the delivery that we expect for our residents. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question that we have is uh, another good one. Are there any rules around the landlord's income, or can anyone apply? So it's not about the landlord's income; it's about the tenant's income. Um, so the the it's about sort of the, the person who's living in the property. Um, so it, 
the landlord income does doesn't really come into it. It's all about the tenant's income. So the tenant income needs to be that under thirty thousand pounds household income or under twenty thousand pounds once you take off for housing costs. Great. Um, and then we have some questions around freehold. So um, Miranda says we're in a private block of flats with share of the freehold among half the tenants. Um, I'm sure some residents could be eligible for grants, but could it be workable in flats and this situation? And then tied to that, Elizabeth says um, I own one flat of four share of a freehold in a converted terrace. Do all the owners need to meet the income threshold to qualify for green improvements on the whole of the property? So for the whole property, then yes, um, basically everyone would need to meet the, the income requirements or be very close at least. I think there might be for a smaller property, there might be some flexibility around it, but it, it would need to be. The majority of people would need to be qualifying to be able to access that really. Um, so yeah, that that would be tricky and also they would all have to be Owner occupiers, and if they're not owner occupiers, then the landlord would have to agree to pay if there's a landlord involved in it. So it does get more complicated when it comes to sort of multiple block, multiple residences within one building, and if you're trying to do it all together. I'm not saying you can't, but it might be slightly trickier. So if you do want to do it, it might be worth applying and then trying to, and then sort of highlighting that. Um, I, I think maybe if you decide you do want to apply maybe apply and then if you let let me know and then I can then speak to Walnuts directly to say this is a slightly more unique case where it's four people all together and how can we do it all together um, it might be it might quite like to do an interesting challenge around doing a whole house around that and and there would certainly be the potential to do something bigger to to the property as well so um again worth applying but um th there may be some things around it. It might be that if you're in one flat it, and you're eligible, then it might be that there's actually things that can be done within that individual block. For larger private blocks, it is a bit more of a challenge because to be eligible for the whole block, then the vast majority of people within that block would need to be eligible for the scheme. So they would need to be meeting the EPC requirements and the income requirements as well. And that could be quite tricky in a large private block. Um, so yeah, that that would be a bit of a challenge, and it is a challenge generally around retrofit of of houses and, and flats. Uh, is that um, large blocks are are a bit more of a challenge around who pays for it, how can it be delivered, things like that. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here in in a block of um, there's twelve flats, two story twelve flats, um, and sort of trying to retrofit where I live is going to be quite tricky because there's share freehold and other people are leasehold and and some people are an occupiers some people are renters um so it, it's all quite complicated in terms of tenure types and how you access funding and there's no real kind of that there's no kind of like mechanism for doing that that's fairly straightforward at the moment there's a lot of research being done around it and it's something that we're keeping an eye on as sort of um, officers working in the climate change area um, because we know it's a really big challenge because we know that nearly 50% nearly of um, the carbon emissions in, in the borough come from um, energy use in domestic settings in people's homes. So it, it's something that needs to be dealt with in terms of um, dealing, with the dealing with climate change. Um, but it, there's nothing that's there for sort of private, um, private owners who don't fall underneath the, the threshold and it is a bit more of a challenge. But like I said, there's people who are looking at how that can work how the financing can work and it's something that's been looked at at a government level and then at a regional level across London and then also we're looking at some of this stuff as well locally. Okay. So I hope that helps a little bit. Thanks Andrew. Um, Maria had a good question about her situation so she's a leaseholder and they live on a first floor flat. Maria I don't know whether you wanted to come off mute and ask um, about your situation to Andrew directly. Um, if you're able um, to do that. Yeah, I'm the Hi, first. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Yep. Yep. Hello. OK, yeah. Um, I live on the first floor and um, I'm a leaseholder. Um, and um, I have an old boiler and old radiators, but um, I live in a very highly polluted um, area of the A3. 
Um, and the double glazing is not up to scratch. Um, there are two um, properties. It's a property of six. Two of the properties are council rented and um, the, the other four are leaseholders as well as myself. So um, my question is, um, I've had an assessment over the phone as well, and I passed the first hurdle, but um, would I be eligible for um, any works to my property? Because it is cold, um, has got an old boiler and radiators, and as I say, I live in a very highly polluted area of the A3 and um, the windows and the seals are not up to scratch. So how would that work in um, this situation of a, um, a block of six where four are, are leaseholders and two are council? So the, what would happen is, is they'd look at what could be done to your individual property. Um, because you're the one who's applied um, and, and you're the one who's sort of passing the eligibility criteria. So what they do is look at actually what are the things that could be installed in your property um, to improve the situation um, and improve the energy efficiency. Um, but it would have to be in line with whatever's in your leasehold agreement. So, for example, if in your leasehold agreement you're not allowed to change your windows for example then you'd need to get agreement from the freeholder which sounds like it would be the council so you'd need to approach them to ask so is that allowed can i do this and i don't know whether that would be allowed or not because it depends on individual situations individual leasehold agreements that you've got yes so I, I can't, understand I can't that, give you a, I have a definite answer because council, i don't know um, regarding windows and they did say that um, you would have to do um, an application for windows to be changed and they would then come round and they will assess regarding windows. OK, um, so I've already like looked into that process. Um, OK. So um, it's, it's but the boiler and that sort of situation, um, we cannot have any um, installation in wall installation because of the way the blocks are built. There is no um, nothing for it to go into basically it's brick okay. to brick so there isn't any way of really doing much um energy efficiency other than changing some major things which is yeah um, boiler and um obviously windows yeah so so the windows it sounds like if it was to be funded via greenhouse grant they'd need to be sort of permission given from the council by the sounds of it so you'd need to speak to them uh, again around that on the boiler thing um the the funding will not replace an old gas boiler with a new gas boiler and that that's just not allowed under the scheme there's no funding to to allow that at all um mm. so if you're going to replace it it would need to be with an air source heat pump um and your home for that to work properly, that would your home would meet, need to be of a certain energy efficiency anyway, because heat pumps work in a slightly different way from gas boilers. With gas boilers, you kind of burn gas, you get hot water immediately to a very high temperature. Um, with heat pumps, it, it heats to a lower temperature, so it will keep your home as warm, but it warms it in a different way. So it's less a blast of heat and it's more constant low levels of heat to keep your home warm all the time and for that you need to have a certain level of energy efficiency otherwise it's going to be struggling to keep your home warm it's going to be on all the time running at a high rate and then actually your energy bills could even go up because it's going to be using an awful lot of electricity if your home's really not very energy efficient um, so it probably wouldn't be so that might not be a solution also they tend to sit externally and so they you'd need to check your leasehold agreements about whether that would be allowed or not. Um, so yeah, so I, I can't give you any more sort of details on that because I don't know the details of the individual property and exactly what the agreements are in place, but I'd say ask and see what see what's possible um, and, and if there's a way of, of doing it or not. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks, thanks Maria. Well. Thank you Thank for your you. question. We'll um we'll also send you all of this inf like the follow up information on on email as well. And if you obviously speak to the screening team and do register, and then if you have any further questions, we can try and help you out with that. Okay, just quickly moving through um other questions that we've had. So Danu says if the boiler replacement is going with ECO three funding, 
can they apply for the windows double glazing through the green homes grant as well yes yeah, yeah. okay yes good great hope that's helpful it's, it's a, if you're eligible for yeah. the eco funding um then doing your boiler under the eco and then getting um green homes grant funding to do some of the fabric around windows insulation things like that that's a good way of doing it especially because we can't fund boiler replacements Right, and what? And sorry, risky. is it worth? What is that funding, Andrew? Is it is it worth mentioning? Uh, so it's the energy company obligation funding, and so um, I can't remember exactly what the eligibility is. because It does depend, um, but it, it's funding from energy companies to help support energy efficiency for people who have lower incomes. From Ofgem, uh, is it Ofgem? Uh, it's, it's it's provided by the yeah. energy suppliers themselves, and they typically have schemes for their customers and things like that so mm -hmm. uh, yeah you put the link in the chat so yeah. it explains it a bit more if anyone wants to have a look um okay great um mandy i can see that you've you said that you were approved last year with retrofit but work wasn't completed you were told that your application was still hold but you haven't heard any more we can probably follow up with that directly can't we yeah. andrew yeah. yeah okay sorry to hear that mandy yeah we'll, we'll follow up directly for you on that um OK, Fiona says if the council have a plan to replace windows in a council freehold property, can a leaseholder apply for money to help pay for the work the council is commissioning? Oh, I, I really don't know. Um, possibly. Um, it might be worth. Again, speaking to to the sort of your contact for the building. And, and highlighting that and, and finding out because um, it, it might be that we might be able to, to do something might be able to, to happen there but I, I I'm really not sure to be honest um, that's a bit more specific and I I don't work in the housing department and I don't know exactly how all that works in sort of like the the fine detail okay so it's worth asking them directly mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you um yasmin says if the housing association has disagreed to join the scheme is there any other way to get them legally to agree since i have two disabled children one of them is severely asthmatic living in a single glazed house with poor energy efficiency and all the heat escape so is there any other way um not under the green Homes grant there's no sort of like legal obligation for them to take part in it, it it's a voluntary thing unfortunately I'm, I'm very sorry about that okay um but yeah we'll, we'll share all these links and um everything else for other ways to improve efficiency if that's helpful um and there might be other schemes that will be useful so some of the ones that andrew shouted out in his presentation um the the rap and the southwest london leap they help as well but we'll obviously we'll send all of those round um in an email as a follow-up as well um in the last few minutes, then we have a few more. Um, one about loft insulation. So can you get loft insulation if you have items stored in the loft? Uh, someone visited previously on a similar scheme and they just said no. Um, you you would need to clear out your loft so that the sort of contractors, the, the people coming in to do the work can access it. But um, the, they should they should really give you a chance to be able to, to clear it and it, um, but but you probably would need to um, either clear it out or certainly move things around. Um, it's not necessarily something that the the, the the work people coming in to do it would would do themselves for you. Um, so you would need to arrange it. Um, but but they shouldn't just sort of, they they should really have explained that to you previously that they do need sort of clear access. Because if you're putting in loft insulation, you're kind of doing the roof, you're doing the floorboards. So if there's if there's loads of boxes in, in in the in the attic, then they're not really able to do that. And um, so it does need to be cleared. But um, they they should probably have explained that to you um, and given you a chance to to clear it. But um, so yeah, so it's, is it worth it's worth registering again for this if you're eligible? Yeah, obviously. if yeah, you're eligible, yeah. then then register and yeah. and just sort of highlight that you want um that you want sort of this sort of thing done and, and um, just need to sort of. Make sure that the, the the loft is is cleared, so that they can they can put the insulation in. Thanks, Andrew. Um, and just wary of the time, so we've got uh, one more in the chat, and that says, "Are you able to use the green scheme to assist with solar panel repairs, or can you have new ones installed?" Um, you could have new ones installed if it's going to be an improvement 
on what you've got already. Um, so if you had a couple of panels, then and you were then going to have much more, that might be eligible for this. But if it's just fixing them, then no. Okay. Um, it, it that that wouldn't really be be counted in because you've got something there. It just needs to be repaired. Um, so yeah, that that's I'm afraid that wouldn't be eligible un, under the scheme. I, I don't think. But there could be that there's other things that that could be done to your home to improve things um, and improve the energy efficiency. Um, so if if you're eligible, it might be worth applying. So it could be that you know there's some insulation that could go in or windows or heating controls, things like that 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 could actually be sort. Of, you might be eligible to have in which will which will help improve the energy of your home. Great, thank you. And we're just coming up to six now. Just quickly, Andrew, would you mind just rattling through the stages again? Um, I think Maria put that in the chat earlier, just the stages of registering to having your work done if you are eligible. Uh, yes, just a moment. Just make sure I've got up. So you need to register on the website uh, and then Groundwork will um, call you to do like a screening call to check your eligibility and get a few more bits of information from you. And then Warmworks will get in touch with you uh, about arranging for a retrofit coordinator to come and visit and assess your property. Then you get a whole house plan with recommendations uh, on how to improve the energy efficiency of your property. And then Warmworks will discuss with you the, the different options that are available to improve your property. And then Warmworks will coordinate um, with you for the work to take place. And after work has taken place, then um, there'll be another assessment to check the new EPC rating to, to see what it is, because um, one of the things with the scheme, they want to see sort of like what the improvement has been. So there have been these improvements made and it's gone from, say, an EPC D to a C. Um, and they want to, to assess that to find out what the difference is. OK, perfect. Great. Well, we've just gone a minute over. Um, thank you very much for coming today um, and hopefully you found that useful. I hope as many of you as possible uh, sign up for the Green Homes Grant Scheme and inquire. Even if you think you might be eligible, it's worth doing it. Um, so just a reminder, we will share this recording around and put it online afterwards for you to watch back. Um, and we will send around a follow up email to everyone that registered with all the links that we've shared today, Andrew's presentation as well and um yeah if you have any other specific questions for us just follow up on on our email but um yeah do get in touch with that greenhouse grant scheme um, thanks again everyone and have a great rest of your evening yep thank you very much everyone for coming on and for asking such great questions as well it's been really good so thank you very much and i hope you all apply <laughs>